Howdy folks. So I apologize for the crudity of this uh, video, but uh, it was kind of last minute. Uh, today's kind of a sad day uh, because my three and a half year old pair of Grado Iggy headphones um, finally failed. Um, in particular, the thing that sort of happens to every headphone is the cable has um, basically the internal conductors in one of the cables has um, basically been bent back and forth too many times and it's snapped. So uh, one of the channels doesn't work anymore. It's not this one, it's actually the, uh, the, the left channel that doesn't work anymore. Um, I just cracked these open to sort of see how easy they were to get into and actually in this case they're actually not that not that bad. You can, you can open them pretty easily. And uh, anyway, I tried to find the Iggy's and uh, apparently they've been discontinued so um, I went through a, a hunt to try and find more headphones. It was quite adventurous and I've ordered some new ones. Um, hopefully they sound okay. They'll probably arrive next week. Maybe I'll do a review on those um, depending on uh, what I think of them because I don't see too many reviews. Um, so I kind of took a gamble on them. They were like 200 bucks, so hopefully they're good. But that's not the po uh, point of this video. Uh, the point of this video is to uh, try and fix the old headphones. Um, now, normally, if the cable fails, um, and it failed right here, right at the uh, the, the phono jack, uh, if it normally when, when a cable fails here, what you would do is you would cut this off and you'd splice on your own end. Um, now, generally, that's a lot easier said than done and it's quite clunky and, you know, eh, I didn't really want to go that road. I might, but I'd rather not. So I had this kind of interesting idea, and I don't know if this has been done or not, but uh, we're gonna try it anyway. And that is, I want to try and weld the cable back together without actually touching the cable at all. And the way I want to do that is with these bad boys. I have two quite large um, 47, 100 microfarad uh, 50 volt caps, which I've got wired in parallel here. And what I want to try and do is I want to charge these up and then I want to discharge them through the cable. So what I want to do is I'm going to use my uh, my meter. I'm going to ohm out the cable. So I'm going to hold this thing in a, in a position where they're just touching each other. The strands are just touching each other and making a con making sort of a connection. And then I'm going to discharge the caps through this and the idea is it's going to generate a spark which is going to superheat the metal and weld the copper strands back together inside the cable. That's my thought. That's, that's what might happen. I mean, you've all done this. You've probably discharged a big cap by, you know, touching two wires together and the wi wires kind of stick together. Well, that's what I want to have happen in the cable. So, I mean, I've, they're already fucked. I can't, you know, use these headphones anymore. So, might as well try this. So first of all, I'm going to prove that they are actually broken. Um, so I've got my multimeter here, and I've already located the uh, the bad bad strand. It's the, uh, the the tip of the TRS jack to the positive of the left um, driver, which is this uh, sort of red color here. Now I'm not. I guess I could probably use the continuity buzzer because um, it doesn't actually buzz that badly uh, because the resistance is kind of high. So, get that in frame, hopefully you can see that. So, right now it's making contact, but you can see, as I move this, the resistance changes. Let's see if I can get it to break completely. Yeah. There we go, it's open now. So, that is the bad, bad connection. So, now that I know where that is, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try this. I've never done this. I'm doing this on camera. Um, now, one of the things I hope doesn't happen is I hope the camera and the uh, the audio recorder don't uh, flip their shit because I did a video quite a while back. Um, I had a blue snowball ice microphone, uh, or no, it was just a regular blue snowball, although they're pretty much identical inside. Uh, and actually, I had a relay in a piece of audio gear near it. And actually, when you turn the relay on and off the little tiny spark inside the relay actually caused it to crash. Um, and I'm gonna be generating massive arcs here. So hopefully, hopefully it doesn't screw with my computers. That would be uh, pretty bad. But uh, anyway, I've just got a, a power supply here. Um, I can't fit all this stuff in frame, but the power supply is not terribly exciting. You've seen it in other videos. So I'm just going to, first of all, start out by connecting 
the uh, the two caps to the uh, to the power supply, turning it on and raising the voltage up to 45 volts. It's a 50 volt power supply. These are 50 volt caps, so I'm going to go to 45, which is pretty much all the way there. So we're charging, charging, charging. Okay, so we're sitting at 45 volts and uh, they have a pretty slow self-discharge. So I've got a few seconds from the time I disconnect it to the time I reconnect it uh, for everything to go on. So I know it's a tip, so I'm gonna connect one of the leads, probably the negative, because it's shorter, there. And then I have to try and get that pad right there, the one on the left. And the idea is I have to be very fast when I hit this, because if I go slowly, it'll arc here and it'll weld the wire the clip lead, it'll weld onto here rather than inside there. So, unfortunately, uh, this isn't going to be easy, but I shall try. I like the way these sound, so I want them to survive. Here goes. Okay, so I heard a snapping. Um, I heard the relay, or the, um, I heard that driver actually move, and, uh, I saw a little bit of smoke come out of the driver, so I hope I didn't just fry the driver with some sort of pulse. So before I do this again, um, I want to verify that the driver still works, and the driver's not shorted, and, uh, I want to check continuity again, so... Uh, these are discharged, by the way. They're discharged, so they're safe. So let's bring the meter back in here. And I shall try and see. Uh, first of all, I want to see continuity across the driver. So I want to do continuity to ground. So that's open. Okay, so let's use actual resistance. So I'm looking at the resistance through the coil and it's showing us 2.7 mega ohms, which is a lot. That's a lot. Because if I measure the resistance through the other side, the good side has a resistance through the coil of about 24 ohms, which is more like what I'd expect. The impedance of these things is nominally 24 ohms, so that's what I would expect. Unless I'm a dumbass and I hit the wrong terminal, which is also very possible. So I may have just blown the driver up. Yep, I think I blew up the driver. Holy shit, I'm a dumbass. Yep. Yep, I think I hit the wrong wire. Fuck. Well, at least we tried, right? Let's see what the continuity is for the other one, just out of curiosity. I wonder if I fixed the cable. I guess I guess that's, that's the real point. If, if the cable's fixed, then... Uh, I guess that's all that matters. So we got about two ohms. What happens if I move that? I mean, two ohms is better than what we had before. Much better than what we had before. And I'm flexing that, and it's not moving. And let's try the other side of it considering that the driver's fried. It's not... It's not... Uh, it doesn't appear to be breaking. Let's turn on the continuity buzzer. 
See if we can hear it fail because the sound is much faster than the display update rate. Okay, that side seems okay. What about the other side? God damn it. I can't, I can't, I cannot believe that I just blew up that driver. Because it looks like this worked. Which means I could have saved these. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be doing it anymore. The resistance is higher on this side because it probably has less strands that are connected. But the fact that I can move this and it's not disconnecting tells me that it probably has fused at least one or two of the strands. Which means that you could probably get, you know, I don't know, you could get some more life out of your headphones this way. It's not going to be robust as in, you know, factory. It's going to be it's going to be a, a, a kludge. It's, it's a band-aid, basically, to get you through until you can buy another pair of headphones. But um, I think I've proved that it works. Um, I've also shown what not to do. Make sure that you measure twice that you're actually connecting the correct side of the speaker, not the wrong side. But uh, but yeah, that, that appears to have worked. So um, yeah. I really wish I had another pair of headphones to try this on, but unfortunately I don't have any other broken pairs. Because I'd love to see how repeatable this is to see if this is a works every time kind of thing, or, I mean, uh, you could uh, probably just do it more than once. I mean, if it doesn't work the first time, you know, reposition the cable and try again and see what happens, but yeah. I mean, if you have big caps, I mean, when you look at the uh, these I would say you probably need something close to this amount of capacitance, close to 10,000 mic at 50 volts, because I've tried um, wa like welding just regular copper wire together with about like 25 volts, 35 volts, uh, and that doesn't appear to work very well. You really need about 50 volts at really close to 10,000 mic. So whatever, you know, do, do the math. Figure out how many joules that is. That's how many joules of energy you need uh, to make this work. So. Um, you know, also, if you're watching this video and you don't know what these are, um, don't attempt this, please, because um, I can just imagine people doing really dumb things, and I don't, I don't want anybody to hurt themselves as a result of seeing this. So, anyway, um, yeah, that that was I think the whole point of the video. Um, the cable is sort of salvaged, but um, I'm certain that I fucked that, which makes me very upset. So let's see, what is the, for shits and giggles, what is the resistance of this driver now? It's supposed to be 24 ohms. I wonder what would happen if I connect this, oh, well, I guess it, it's probably, it's pretty much open, it's so this is incredibly difficult to do. Oh, it's actually measuring open. Oh yeah, that's open, that's totally open, cool. Yeah, I was I was probably measuring the resistance of the uh, the insulation on those wires. That was what the uh, eight megs or whatever was. So, yeah. So hopefully this was uh, informative uh, as to what you can do and what you should not do. But anyway, uh, now I'm just waffling. So uh, hopefully you uh, enjoyed that, and learned something. Thanks for watching.